Hi, and welcome to NTI Online. My name is David Nicholson, and today we're going to be discussing internal PCB faults. All of these faults indicate that there's something wrong that the control board has diagnosed with itself. In many cases, the faults are genuine, but in other cases, they're caused by external factors. Today, we're going to be covering error codes 301, 302, 303, 305, 306, and 307. The troubleshooting for each of these codes is effectively the same, and that's why I've grouped them all into one, one video. You want to start by uncovering the low voltage connections on your boiler, and what I recommend is that you disconnect each electrical connector that comes from the outside world, remove those from your circuit board, reset the error code, and see what the boiler does. If your error immediately repeats, the next step will be to check the incoming voltage. To do that, you'll want to get your voltmeter. We're going to set it to volts AC. And the power comes into this boiler up here in the junction box and then follows down to the main circuit board on this green plug. You could test at either location, but I recommend testing right next to the boiler in case there's a poor connection inside the boiler for some reason. The standard voltage check is to go from line to neutral. You should get approximately 120 volts, plus or minus 5 or 6 percent. You want to go from line to ground. You should also have 120 volts. And lastly, go from neutral to ground. If you see more than one or two volts on your neutral to ground connection, it indicates that there is an open neutral in the system and that you need to trace your wiring and ensure that all the wire nuts are tight and the switches are connected properly. If your voltage check is okay, at that point we would typically find that the control board is bad. There is one exception to that though, and that is error code 303. Error code 303 is often caused when the water pressure switch that's connected to the boiler gets wet or damaged in some way. The easiest way to access that switch if you have a TRX 150 combi or 120 like the boiler in front of me is to loosen the side panel and then remove the wires from the switch. So we'll show you how to do that next. Before proceeding with this step, it's a good idea to disconnect power from the boiler. To access the side panel, simply remove the two Phillips screws at the top and the bottom of the cabinet. On production boilers, there's also a screw in the top center of the cabinet and the bottom center of the cabinet. You'll want to remove each of those as well. I've already done that for the purpose of this video. Slide this side to one side. Reach in and find the three brown wires connected to the water pressure switch and disconnect those from the switch. Once you've removed these three wires, examine the plug carefully. Make sure there's no water damage, no corrosion on this plug. Reset the air and see if the problem persists. Also check on the circuit board, looking especially at the left hand side of the circuit board where all the electrical connections come to the boiler. And again, you're looking for water, corrosion, or any signs of damage. If you see any of that, either repair the damage or replace the damage component. If the circuit board problem persists after you've done that, then you do have a bad circuit board. If you have to replace the control board, simply disconnect all of the wires including the 120 volt connection here, your flame probe and your three grounds. All of these connectors will come off. There's two clips in the back of the circuit board that you push away. That lets you lift the circuit board up. And at that point, you can lift it out of the board. Reinstall the new board in the opposite fashion. If you have ongoing problems with internal faults, and there's nothing found wrong inside the boiler or with the electrical connections coming to the boiler, it sometimes indicates that you have a power problem coming in from the outside world. If you're on an off-grid electrical supply, it's a good idea to check with your electrical contractor and see that the boiler is properly grounded and that the system is working properly. Another instance where we'll see internal faults show up on the PCB that don't necessarily indicate a problem with the boiler is when you're using a generator or some sort of temporary power supply. Those can interfere with the way the boiler runs if you're using anything like that, what we recommend is that you use a uninterruptible power supply between the boiler and the generator 
to avoid sending unnecessary electrical shocks to the circuit board. Thank you for attending the training today. If you have any questions, as always, call our tech support at 1-800-688-2575.